You know, it's said that the best times of our lives are spent with family and friends. All the work we've done falls away when what we hold on to or those times we just get together with the ones we love. Stories and laughter flow. Well, that's why we named this latest country's family reunion Getting Together. Because when we get together with our favorite country music legends, just like our own families, the stories and the laughter just comes pouring out. Oh, and we sing some great songs, too. Hosted by Whisper and Bill Anderson and featuring several new country music legends who wanted to get together with us, once again, we capture precious memories you'll enjoy for years to come. So why not sit a spell and listen in on Country's Family Reunion, Getting Together. Gang, I can't think of a better way to start this segment than with a great song from the Whites. Cheryl and Daddy Buck over on the piano. Great job. Larry, they were telling me you produced the album that that song came out of. I sure did. I, that was one of the most enjoyable experiences I ever had. I mean, we talk about the whites and the, the soul they've got and the emotion they've got. It goes far beyond most artists I've ever worked with. I mean, it's, you can feel the love between them for each other mm-hmm. and then the love of the song that they're singing. And uh, while I'm telling the story, we were all set to go in and record. I decided to get real sick. So I was in intensive care at the hospital. And uh, they went in the studio with the musicians and recorded the album while I was in intensive care. But I got to tell you something. The first time I gained consciousness, when I opened my eyes, Buck White was right there praying for me. And I know that he's a man of God. And I went, this has got to be bad. <laughs> 
I swear, that's not, that was my first conscious moment. Was seeing Buck White right there. Lord help this guy, and I'm going, ooh. That's what you thought it was. Ooh, yeah. yeah. But that, I'm very proud of that album. I really am. It well, was, now, even though you well, weren't there, actually, did your name still go on it? Uh, absolutely. Actually, we only did one song with that. Love Larry. Won't Wait. That, no, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Love Won't Wait. And yeah. when, he, when he got better, then we, we did that so we'd have a single. Yeah. And, uh, That's right. And it was. That's uh, right. Um, That's right. And Jimmy Bowen. Jimmy Bowen. Did it as a favor it. for him. Bowen walked in the studio. He was very sweet. With my musicians, mm -hmm. my engineer. My act, you know, whatever. Your studio, every choice every, that he would have made, that's what he he said. He honored. He Larry. told he told the engineer, he told the leader of the session, he said, "This is Larry Butler's session." Wow, that and I wanted to be there. Had you already picked out the songs? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. we had gone yeah. and we yeah. did that one song, released it. That, Love the other, won't Love wait. Won't wait. Yeah. Then we waited on him. He sure did, then pal. Finished the album. <laughs> You're not gonna believe what Ed Bruce is about to tell us about <laughs> yeah. Johnny Lee, because you told me this at lunch. Uh oh. Y'all all know Johnny pretty well, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Too well. I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've done something maybe no man has done. Really? Oh, yeah. man. I got Johnny Lee to church. Oh, I, was, wow. I was doing, uh, I was up in Branson last year uh, doing a service at Norman Jean's sun, Sunday morning service. Yeah, but he showed up. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. Cal Smith came. Yeah. Cool. But I got Johnny Lee to church. The man. roof didn't fall in or anything? No. Well, way to go, Ed. <laughs> what's up, what's up? I mean, this feels like church. Maybe you ought to write that. It really does. Do what? Write a song. <laughs> so Johnny yeah. been looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> 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 hey, hey the drummer. Let me tell you something, Larry. It, it don't oh, hurt looking. to look. You can get a menu. That don't mean you got to order. <laughs> he's looking for all. I the used wrong to go to church all the time. <laughs> But a lot of times now, I mean, on a schedule, we're tra generally traveling on Sundays, you know. But the Lord, even as crazy as I act, still near and dear to my heart. Amen. I know, I know where it comes That's from. That's right. Absolutely. Amen. Did you grow up going to Sunday school and church as a boy? Um, I hadn't grown up yet. <laughs> no, I ain't growing up. Uh, you know, yes and no. I had a stepdad that used to make us go. I think the only reason he really wanted us to go is to get ourselves out of the house, let him have some time, you know. So I kind of resented that. We was always working all the time, you know, getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning, milking cows and stuff, and, you know, in the morning and the night, you know, whether you had, you know. So, uh, but later on, uh, in junior high, me and my other buddies, you know, we, we got tight in church, and I went and got saved, and, and I, and I love going. And when I do get an opportunity to go to church, I like to find a place where I can get something out of it, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't like uh, organized religion. I like going here in the... Gospel of the Lord. That's right. You yeah. ever sing in church? Yes. I think most of us probably yeah. have. Probably where most of us sang the first time. First thing I ever did in church was play trumpet with an old boy named Richard McKay. We did uh, the old rugged cross. I was nervous. I was white knuckling it too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you played the trumpet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to play a little banjo, a little fiddle. When I first started playing fiddle, though, I, when the Cotton Eye Joe first came out, you know, I was working at Gillies all the time, I said, man, this is cool. I went up to the music store and bought me a fiddle. And I sat in front of my record player all day long, and I learned enough to get by on us. I'm really surprised the band tonight. You know? Girls, he was the one. <laughs> so I got this fiddle in there, and, and I, was, I surprised everybody. And I, I sat there all day, I mean, over and over and over and over, and I, I got it. I said, that, it's going to be good enough. They're drinking beer. They ain't going to notice that much difference. I plugged that thing. And I said, kick it off, boys. And I was about that oh, off. Because my record player and our tuning was a little bit, you know how oh. oh. I only knew it one way. Oh. But after that, my band, they, they would hide my bow or take the bridge <laughs> off the fiddle or whatever. You know. Bill, I found out something. Buck, Buck White's got a secret. Buck White has got a secret? Uh-oh. What kind of secret? He wasn't born in Texas. He wasn't? No. Where was he born? Oklahoma. Suburb of Texas. <laughs> oh, kiss my foot. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Texas just overlapped into Oklahoma. Texas <laughs> overlapped. Wasn't a hit, but it's my favorite song I've ever written. What a band. What will we do now? You tell me. The hourglass is off. 
out of sight How could love slip through our fingers And leave nothing but time on our hands And how will we live now You tell me With parts of our hearts Torn away Just existing Makes dying look easy Maybe tomorrow I've done enough time And how will I sleep now, you tell me, with only my arm by my side, perhaps I'll learn Sleeping all over And just maybe Without dreaming This time And who'll make you laugh now You tell me Since you've set your cloud On his own Maybe tomorrow I've done enough time today. Okay, two, two quick questions, Larry. Stay there on the mic. You said that wasn't a hit. The minute you started into it, everybody here recognized yep. it. Uh, why, why, why do you say it wasn't a hit? I remember. Well, we do the song a lot, and everybody... And that's a lot of times your fellow artists like songs off your albums that maybe country radio or, or something right. didn't. So right. we sing it every night, and, and I'm very grateful that the, the people in this room for whom I have respect and whose songs and whose talent... You know, just happened to like that one. So it, uh, my, my wife said something very interesting. <laughs> she said, I do. That was <laughs> but past that, I, she came home from taking the kids to school one day, true, the farm we had out in Brentwood. And I was sitting at the coffee table, and I was madder than an old red, wet hen. She said, what are you mad? I said, well, I've done enough dying, lost the bullet today at 10. 
And I just met. She said, Larry, she said, I can't sing. I've done enough dying today and hit that high note, taking the kids to school. She said, I can sing Houston. Houston. She said, I can't sing that other one. So, you know, and that's, wow. what do we do? We've yeah. all made a lot of money singing songs that the friends and neighbors could sing. So it wasn't a big hit, but it's still, you know, my favorite. That's interesting. Why is it your favorite? That was my well, I, the way I had that, I, I was sitting there one night in my little, you know, people always ask songwriters, they ask us how we write songs. Right? I was sitting there in the den about midnight, and I went, My fingers had never gone to that chord. It's just a D chord up four, yeah. right? I don't, what is it? I don't know what chord it is. So I decided it's a beautiful melody. I need to write a song with that. So I went, blah, 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 blah. blah. It was just drivel. It was, it was horrible. So I put the guitar down, and I walked up the stairs, across the, you know, the kitchen to go to bed with Janice, and I said, what will I do now? I've got that beautiful melody. What am I going to do now? I walked back across the deal. What will we do now? <laughs> Right, so I did there the first go. verse, I tried the second verse, and it was just blah, 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 blah. It was drivel, so I put the guitar down again, <laughs> walked up the stairs, walked across the kitchen. How am I going to go to sleep now? I'll never go to sleep now. How will I sleep now? I turned around. How will I sleep now? You t it's the God's so for you folks out there in Radio Land, you've broken the code. That's it. <laughs> so because of the way it happened and that I that I think it's a, a well-crafted song. And if I know how to do that, it's because of some of the people in this room and Mickey and Chris and Willie and Roger and John and Dottie. So, uh, and Ed and a great craftsman of songs right there, Mr. Anderson. So thank you all. I'm glad you voted for me. Yes, <laughs> So you wrote that and you didn't have, I've done enough dying today. You didn't have that already. You were putting no, those. No, oh when I got God. there, when I got to that part, how will we live now, you tell me? Parts when I'm sad and just made with sleeping this time. No. And how will we live now, you tell me, with parts of our hearts torn away? And then just out of the clear blue sky, just existing makes dying look easy. So dying, I wanted to keep. Maybe, but maybe tomorrow. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, blah. <laughs> Thank you. Great story. Thank, Thank you for showing up. I appreciate my friends voting for me. <laughs> now, those of you that voted against him, don't you feel bad? <laughs> aren't you sorry? Na 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 na. I got to sing anyway. <laughs> That's the, uh, see, We've had so many ballads, huh? I don't see that it's won everybody over. See? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I was wondering what room he's going to die in. <laughs> I'm going to die in this one if I don't go pee. <laughs> there ain't nothing better than him and his guitar like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but the band I, sure sounded good But then behind. again, when him and Steve and Rudy sing together, it's as, as good a family harmony as there is anywhere. He was mad at me for a long time. Released no, a record called you. Coward of the County. He called Always me. got a thing in there about the Gatlin boys. I swear. And you produced He said, I thought we were friends. I said, we are. Larry, how could you do that to us? Everybody's pointing at us thinking that's us in the, in the song. Yeah, that's, yeah. Those Why didn't you change the name from Gatlin Boys? It was already out. out. <laughs> oh, it was already I out. didn't write the song. <laughs> who did? Uh, Roger Bowling. Well, that's who he ought to be mad at. I know. I swear to you, he was mad at me. <laughs> Won't do him any good, though, now. Well, they, no. were not, they were really not nice guys in that song. They were really Well, I know that, nice. but I didn't do it. I know. He didn't do it. He didn't, I didn't do it sing either. It. I didn't write. But the singer is important. <laughs> <laughs> we ought to get Buck Trent and Roy Clark to uh, oh, yeah. maybe liven it up just a little oh, bit. Come on, Buck. I did. Oh, God. Oh, hey, hey, Neil. Neil. Oh, are we going to do hey, it here? Listen. Sure. Hey. We no, do, I'd we be don't fine want to here because if I walk up there, I won't have the energy to do it. <laughs> I tell you, I don't Boy, think we we'll all be crying, crying on this, folks. <laughs> <laughs> tired of crying, ain't you, Buck? Hey, Roy, talk about those red strings on your guitar. You were telling me a little bit about that, that those glow in the dark and there's some kind of special strings? Uh, yes, they are, are made by DR, and this is a... Uh, what a test set, I guess you'd, they want me to take it out on the road and uh, see what I think of them. 
and so far I've not been able to get through a tune. <laughs> yeah. I bet they're going to love that. Yeah. <laughs> you may be the keeper. That may be the only set. Hey, hey, look, hey what am I going to get out, Jack? Thank you, Jimmy. I, I'm him I know it. Damn. What is it? I get around there and put the stove <laughs> That's why you put it up. See, it's. I think. You've done this before. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted somebody to help me, and they never did. I know. <laughs> yeah. All right. You've done this for the Statler, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roy, what Jeannie just asked me, what, what is the point in them being red? Oh, and glowing uh, in the dark. I, mean. I don't know if it's a gimmick or not. What I see the future of this string for the company is like in the hard rock where they do a lot of movement. Oh, because they are... Iridescent, yeah. is that a word? Mm -hmm. uh, they glow in the dark. And so you can imagine if you had uh, a dozen guitars yeah. going across the stage when the stage is blacked out. That's my report that I'm going to give to the company. <laughs> Some of them are so, so wasted we, they can't find their But glass. the main <laughs> reason is that they... Huh? Can we cut the lights? <laughs> I can see it, yeah. <laughs> you want to see if they work, huh? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Maybe the strings will work, but we didn't have a chance to uh, to rehearse this. Now, Buck and no. I have done it 100,000 times, but that was 50,000 days ago. <laughs> that's right. That's and right. So I got a good although memory. we played it together. What? And now we uh, play it yeah, in it, each other's show. Yeah. But through the years, they have changed a little. Whoa. Yeah. You ain't changed it, have you? Not intentionally. <laughs> Whoa. But what the problem is... We, we play this tune every 30 years. I know. I just said that part. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we, we get into each other's he lines said it in here. days, though. I tell you what, I've heard me do this before. <laughs> so if you just want to go, follow me out to the, where the cakes and cookies are, uh, I am. we'll skip the tune. I am. Huh? <laughs> that suits me. Now, what I'm going to do is do the best I can, That's... and you fill in all the holes. I'll try. I, you always did. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to get out of one.
turn. That's a chicken. <laughs> Much nicer than the uh, performance. <laughs> I'm going to call the company and tell them uh, on the set they sent me, I got an awful lot of empty holes. <laughs> they don't work in every position. That's great, partner. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We need, to, we need for him to do Malagania. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they want a nail. Got talent. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about them strings, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to kill you, deal, but. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> I'll buy you some strings. <laughs> people to turn on me. <laughs> <laughs> I better be nice. He's giving me a ride back to Branson. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I hope it's not uh, hey, how, how about Jimmy Fortune for his technical assistance? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, Jimmy. Yeah. He used to do that for the Statler brothers. <laughs> That's how I got the job. <laughs> but let me tell you something, folks. <laughs> I met Roy in 1962. I was with Porter Wagner. We was in Kansas City doing three shows for half peoples. It was a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> and Roy, one of his first dates, he was working as a single. And he was tearing him up. I run, got Porter. I said, Porter, there's a little fat boy out here. <laughs> He's killing these people with these jams and jellies and moxies <laughs> in the back of the car. <laughs> but we've been... <laughs> <laughs> but we've been friends forever, but uh, since, but nobody done it like Roy Clark. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody done it like Roy Clark. I have to add nobody one thing. followed him. The ingredient was I had a chartreuse jumpsuit. 
on <laughs> and a pink shirt that went with it. And we were playing the Starlight Theater outdoors. Humidity was 120% and hot. And I said to Buck, you ain't gonna I tell. said, I don't think I'll wear my uh, jacket because it's so hot. I'll just wear the, you know, there's a vest-like thing underneath. So I put it on and Buck said, let me see. And I put the jacket on, I took the jacket off, and he looked at me and said, wear the coat. <laughs> We've got the first annual Roy Clark, what kind of award, what do we call it? Uh, we haven't named it yet, but uh, the main part of it is that it's awarded to uh, Jimmy Fortune. Okay, and, and what's it for? Pardon? For, for him being your guitar Oh, tech? yes. Okay, I what is the award? meant to have it bronzed. Hold up the... But... Uh... <laughs> Get a good close-up for that. <laughs> hey. The huh? G-String Award. Hey. Look. Wow. Look, Look, man. It's a G-String oh, no, Award. G-String Award. G-String Award. The G-String Award. It's yes. the red G Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. And I will treasure it and honor it. I know I'll, you will. I'll hang Thank it in a safe man. place, hey, I promise. Hey, uh, treasure that this morning give me, pal. <laughs> <laughs> and it glows in the dark. <laughs> uh, and it glows in the dark, Jimmy, so be careful where you oh, yeah. wear it. Yeah. You can have diamonds yeah. put All in right. there, Jimmy. A lot of great duets in the room. We've had Daly and Vincent. we got Joey and Rory and... Um, Got another duet, been singing them for a long time, Jim, Ed, and Helen. Yeah. Jim, Ed, Brown, and Helen. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. Can I, can I say something? Just one real short something. Let them go ahead. I can talk over there to, up there and play it. I just wanted to say what a family this is. And, and I have been, uh, been, well, it's been a pleasure to be here for nearly all of them. But it, it is so great to hear the stories and see all of y'all and be with the family once again. Yes. And this band is unbelievable. Uh, Y'all know this, so everybody can sing with us. That's why I'm leaving it up to you.
Yeah. 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 Can, can we tell what happened over there in Pigeon Forge? Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, this. <laughs> I had the opportunity to work with Jim, Ed, and Helen for a number of years at Eagle Mountain Theater in Pigeon Forge, and um, it was it was really like one big family, and uh, we all became fairly well acquainted, you know, and. Uh, but anyway, it was a great show, and I would go out, and I would open, and Helen would come out, and, she, you know, she, I'd introduce her. She followed me, and she sang her songs. And then she would introduce Jim Ed. He'd come out and sing, and then he'd bring her back, and they did their duets. So one day we're up there, you know, and so I introduce Helen. She goes out and does her song, you know, and then she does this big old build-up for Jim Ed, you know. And ladies and gentlemen, and she would walk toward the wings, and they, she had a, a handheld mic, and she'd just hand him the mic, and he'd come on out and do his <laughs> so, Well, one day she did the big build-up, the big introduction, and no Jim Ed. So she, had, she still had the mic in her hand. She said, Jim Ed, Jim Ed. And, and she didn't know. She, she wasn't paying attention to the fact she had the mic in her hand. But she's running up and down the halls in the back of the theater. <laughs> Jim Ed, Jim Ed. Well, that's all you could hear out on the... <laughs> You could hear it in the theater, you know, and she's saying, Jim Ed, Jim Ed, oh my God, you're asleep. <laughs> <He> said, <laughs> oh, you should have heard it. Oh, he jumped up, started putting his shirt on. I mean, I don't know how long the band is out. It don't but it was take the long. funniest thing in the world. It was fabulous. Well, we had a wonderful time. And it's hard to come out and sing bubbly and fresh when you're sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> he came out uh, and sang. But it, but it was great. There's a number of things that happened that were funny, but uh, working with these two, it's, uh, it was an absolute uh, pleasure, and they're, they're great professionals, and, of course, Jim Ed's the king of smooth, you know. It's just, uh, oh, yeah. just, uh, just, uh, just a great, great opportunity for me. But when you got a great singer like Con, and he had his family with him. Oh, yeah, I had and my, it was. Uh, Sang in harmony. Oh, Lord, yeah. they were so great. Well, let me ask you this. Okay. Con was on first. Did he yeah. put you to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was watching a ball game. If you want to he was watching that. basketball. Oh. When I stop dreaming, that's when I'll stop loving you. The words that I've been been hurt in my life the first time I've ever wanted to cry was the night when you told me you loved someone else and you asked me if I could forget when I stop dreaming that's when I Take a pebble and teach it to grow. You may teach all the raindrops to return to the clouds, but you can't teach my heart to forget. When I stop dreaming, that's when I. So very good. Jamie, I got to ask you. Uh -oh. did, no, did you ever sing with Charlie Louvin? You had so much of the, the Ira in your, your tenor voice. I just wondered if you ever sang with Charlie. I did. He called, um, uh, Mitchell Brown called me and said, um, uh, Charlie wants you to sing on his record with him. It was the last record he ever cut. And I thought, he wants me to sing? You know, I was, man, nobody. I mean, I don't, I don't want to get near that, you know. Okay. But I, I have so much respect for them. So I, I agreed to go, and I sang two songs with him. 
And we sat uh, together for over an hour, and he said some of the kindest things to me and talked to me forever. Because for me, for a while, he was hard to get to know, you know, for, for me. And uh, so I just kind of stayed quiet when I was around him. But, man, he let loose when I was there in the studio with him that day. And, and we just had a great conversation, and I got to sing some of Iris' parts. It was really fun. Well, I'm sure you nailed him. Jimmy Fortune was telling me you guys are thinking about adding him and a bass singer and doing some quartet stuff. We are. We're looking into doing some things. Uh, we got our very first show in Cookville, Tennessee on uh, February the 23rd in, uh, of 2012. And uh, we're going to do uh, the trio thing and then add the, uh, the, uh, the bass vocal to it with a country band behind us. It won't be bluegrass, but we're not leaving bluegrass. We're just doing some things because we love Jimmy Fortune so much. And we think we've really got a, uh, a great gift, an important gift, and a message that we need to, to give to the fans that love the Statler Brothers and Daily and Vincent fans and just fans that don't even know they like it. They need to hear it. Amen. And, and yeah. I'll tell you what we hear. Let me tell you what we hear all across the nation. And, and we've been blessed with a loyal fan base from, from day one. They've really been loyal to us. And here's what we hear from them every night. We miss the classic country. They miss it. You know, they still go and see the Oaks. They talk about that. They love them, and, and they get to see a lot of you out on the road, but they don't get to hear it as much. So we thought we would put it together with Jimmy, and Jimmy was all for it. We said, let's go do a country classics night in Cookville, Tennessee as a quartet and sing Smoky Mountain Memories and Thank God I'm a Country Boy and just do some of these old songs that we love so much. Okay, but with Jimmy Fortune and you, who's going to sing the high part? Him. <laughs> Him. He's probably going to lay you. back a little bit, maybe. And we call, we call each other from time to time, and we try to see which one can sing the highest on the phone. Yeah, because I'll say, hey, Jimmy, what are you doing? He's like, not much, what are you? And I'll say, not much, what are you? <laughs> Well, that's going to be great. It's going to be fun. Yeah. We, we've started, we did some rehearsing, going to continue rehearsing the rest of the year, and, and uh, then we're actually uh, trying to go to Branson for, for next year, late next year, to do uh, five days out there as the classic country quartet. Well, that's great. Well, I wish you a lot of luck, even yeah. you. <laughs> no. Are you, are you aware of what he did to me the first night I ever met him? I'm not. He came in my dressing room at the Opry, and I didn't really know him at all, and he walks in, I don't remember if it was a Polaroid camera, but I had a, a camera. camera. Yep. I'm standing at the sink in the dressing room brushing my teeth. And all of a sudden, he's, I did, I got you. You took a picture of me with toothpaste <laughs> running down the corner of my mouth. I know, I, I couldn't you, believe it. I said, Bill Anderson brushes his teeth like that? <laughs> and I was so impressed that we brushed our teeth the same way. <laughs> You should be on the bus with him. The only difference is when, when I, you know, we're both the same, but when, when you put your pants on, you write gold records. <laughs> you put that picture on the internet, too, didn't oh, you? I did not, but I've still got it. It will be tonight. Hey, it's one in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> They're great. Darren and Vincent, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, that's what Larry calls you. Daily and Vincent, I'm no better. I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> 